Good morning, everyone. We all know India has now crossed the 3 lakh mark in terms of coronavirus cases. Since the initiation of Unlock 1, both cases and deaths have risen multifold. The past week alone has observed a surge with almost 10,000 cases, new cases every single day, and 250 to 300 deaths. Today, we have here Dr. Shahid Jamir to discuss the coronavirus unlock and lock situation in India. Sir, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Kriti. So good quickly jumping in, sir. In your recent article, you had mentioned that the countrywide lockdown will no longer help in the coronavirus fight. Given this view and the current trends, what are your thoughts on Unlock 1? Well, uh, Unlock 1, uh, first go back and let's see how the lockdown has worked before we talk about Unlock or how Unlock will work. When I said that it's uh, no longer uh, going to give any returns, uh, the lockdown, uh, I meant that uh, there comes a time when you have to balance out the disease with the other impacts on society. And we've all seen the effect it has on businesses and livelihoods and all of that. Yeah. But let us look at uh, what happened during the lockdown. Uh, so when the lockdown was announced on uh, 25th of March, we had uh, 657 cases and 12 deaths. Uh, we went through a 68-day lockdown, and on the last day of the lockdown, which was 31st of May, uh, we had 198,609 cases, and we had 5,408 deaths. Today, as you rightly said, we have uh, over 3 uh, lakh cases, and we have 8,890 deaths. In just the last 24 hours, we have added 11,320 new cases, and we have had 389 deaths. Now, let us look at the positives first. I don't want to start with the negatives first. The positives is that the recovery rate went from 9% to about 50% during the lockdown. The case doubling rate went from about five and a half days at the start of the lockdown to about 16 days. Today, it is about 23 days. Uh, the testing capacity increased from very small capacity to about one lakh cases per day. Uh, there are models that have predicted that if there was no lockdown, by 20th of May, India would have had about 50 lakh cases. Uh, India only had 1.12 lakh cases by 20th of May. Our yes. mortality rate, if you consider uh, either as percent of case fatality, uh, remained lower than the global average. The global average was about 7%. We remained at around 3%. Uh, if you look at based on per million uh, population, it's very low. Those were the positives. What are the negatives? The negatives are that the cases, the total number of cases increased about 300 times during the lockdown. The total number of deaths increased about 450 times during the lockdown. The daily cases increased from 121 at the time of lockdown to about 8,780 at the time of the, lo the lockdown opened, which is over 70 times. The testing, although it has increased, it has remained low. Today, we are testing about 4,000 per million population, which is one of the lowest in the top 10 countries uh, in terms of numbers of cases. And we have all seen the internal migration uh, that has happened, which has essentially taken the infection to villages. Uh, so these are really uh, the negatives and the positives. Uh, as far as how the unlock will play out, uh, first of all, we are the only country that has gone in a lockdown uh, when the cases were very low, but we have come out of a lockdown when the cases were rising. No other country has done that. Every other country has opened lockdowns when the cases have been going down. 
But for us, it became really a matter of survival from an economy point of view, and therefore we had to open. So if today, uh, on an average, about 10,000 confirmed cases are coming every day, and the outbreak is growing at the rate of about 3% uh, per day, most people believe that we will have a peak in a few weeks time, maybe around you know, early to mid July. So if there was between now and uh, the peak uh, about five weeks, four to five weeks, we would be adding roughly three to three and a half lakh cases to the present number, which will take the number at peak time about six, six lakh cases. And then there would be a fall of the curve. Now it depends. We don't know what sort of fall we will see, whether it's going to be a short fall or it's going to be a more prolonged fall. Uh, it's likely to be a more prolonged fall simply because uh, the lockdown is open, people are interacting with each other, and we really have, don't have the restrictions uh, anymore. So. Uh, if we assume that the outbreak will come to a baseline by around September, uh, we are easily looking at somewhere around eight and a half to nine lakh cases by September end. These are confirmed cases one is talking about. However, you may have seen uh, the zero survey that has come out just recently, where ICMR has claimed that in 83 different districts in the country, and they have sampled more than 26,000 people. Uh, the population infectivity is around 0.73%. If it is 0.73%, then for India's population, it translates to about one crore. So there are about a crore people right now who are infected. Calculating it another way, ICMR says that we have an, a population mortality rate of 0.08%. If we calculate infection based on that, it, today it comes out to be about two crore people infected. And I think that's a reasonable number. Uh, we should not worry too much about these numbers because 80% people will remain asymptomatic for mild. How the unlock will play out will depend upon, upon how we are able to work with our hospitals, how we are able to make sure that the hospital capacity is, uh, is adequate, how we are able to uh, control uh, the uh, administrative processes here on. So it's, it's very, very important that a few things happen. One is that, uh, Data has to be collected properly and data has to be available transparently. There really is no substitute for testing. Uh, unless you test, you don't know where your hotspots are. You don't know where to control, where to uh, relax. So data is of, is of extreme use and data transparency is of extreme use to build trust in the system. Unfortunately, much of that is not happening. The, the uh, effort is to hide data uh, to avoid creating panic, uh, but it would be much better if the government released the real data uh, and then it would build trust in government. And I'm not saying any one government, both state government, central government, local governments, everyone, all of us are, are, are part of this. So really how the lockdown will unlock will play out will depend upon these factors. Oh, I'll yes. stop there. Yeah. Yes. So you mentioned middle about how the uh, uh, the health system, you know, uh, has to be very uh, on point for the unlock situation to be positive for us. Mm -hmm. And we do know that our health system is under extreme distress. In such a scenario, do you think shifting the mildly symptomatic patients to makeshift facilities or home isolation will be uh, will be successful? so that hospitals can actually keep hospital beds for patients in dire need. What yeah. options do you think authorities have in uh, this regard? So personally, I think it's a good move to have home isolation uh, yeah. because people who really don't need to be in a hospital shouldn't be in a hospital. 
uh, mm -hmm. simply because hospitals are also the uh, the most worrisome place for getting other infections. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, home isolation, home care, and I see at least in Delhi, a number of hospitals have come out with these packages where you can isolate yourself at home and they will provide online care and they will provide oxygen and equipment and you know, everything that you may need. Yeah. Uh, so it's a good move. Okay. But how many people in our country can afford self-isolation? Uh, if you are living, uh, a whole family is living in one room, how will you self-isolate at, at home? Uh, if you are in a village living in a, in a small uh, you know, dwelling, how will you self-isolate yourself? And that therefore, it is very important to have community isolation. So if, for example, in a neighborhood, one can designate one building, which will be an isolation for everyone in that mohalla or in that gali, uh, and let that be monitored by the community. It brings trust. It brings faith. Person is close to where they live normally. Uh, it will be much easier on them than to be isolated, you know, uh, somewhere where, you know, they have no bearings. So I think it's very, very important for now community isolation uh, to be looked at. The same can be applied to villages. Our inf the infection has gone to our villages. So yeah. can we, for example, have an isolation at one end of the village where anyone who has to be isolated can be isolated there. They'll be still in their village and yet be isolated. So we, we really have to think of those kind of strategies and not simply drive. India is, is not a homogeneous country. India has many countries in one. And there, therefore, there have to be many solutions which are context specific. Yes, sir. I think community participation is very important for a populous and diverse country like ours. So, but going back and again, going back to the lockdown point, uh, with the recent surge, there, have been, there has been a lot of discussion regarding the extension of the lockdown. Do you think that this is a wise move for India, considering the economic impact we're already facing from the earlier lockdowns? So, I don't believe that a national lockdown is going to give any further dividends. Yeah. Having said that, it is possible that you may want to have lockdowns in of, of clusters, of hotspots. Mm -hmm. uh, why subject everyone to a lockdown when you can lock down places that have you know, high infectivity clusters? Uh, yeah. So that would probably be a more viable strategy than to have a national lockdown. Uh, that's, that's my view on it. Uh, and, and, and may I add that to do that, you have to know where those clusters are. And yeah. therefore, you must test. Yeah. There is no escaping from testing. Testing. Uh, you know, our hotspots are our major economic hubs. And, you know, the increasing number of cases in these areas is very damaging, along, is a very damaging in the long term for our country. Do you think there's a possible solution for this? Possible solution for? <laughs> the, for trying to save our, uh, our economic hubs. From well, uh, you know, it's a, it's a playoff uh, between uh, saving your economy in the longer term. And, and we have seen how, you know, the economy appears to be more resilient than what we thought initially. Uh, if, you, if you see businesses are coming back and you, are, you know, you will have to give them, give them some time, but it's a trade-off. Uh, and therefore, I really think that the cluster strategy of locking down would be a better strategy than having national lockdowns. National lockdown just closes down everything. But I do believe that this move to uh, start schools and all is not a very good move. Uh, schools will become hotspots very quickly. Uh, yeah. You know, if students lose a year, so what? If the average age of a person living in India today, today is 70 years, and you lose one year, so what? Let students have the ability to read and learn at home. And I also don't subscribe to this idea of online teaching. 
online teaching is a very elitist idea uh, online teaching is not available to everyone that you know we would like to educate and who would like to get educated uh, so again i i think more social scientists have to get involved with this and not just rely on scientists uh, or uh, bureaucrats on this yes sir so thank you so much thank you so much for being here and thank you everybody for watching this video uh, if you have any comments or suggestions please do uh, leave your comments under the video thank you thank you very much thank you sir